Okay, this is the loop mesh video. I'm going to try to keep this really short because um, I've got a live demo I've already put together that I want you guys to see. Playing around with a little tube camera editing tonight, among other things. All right, loop mesh. Um, you find this under it's a VST instrument. It's one. It's considered one of the synths. This um, this thing is very. I mean, for what it does, it's very cool. It does mash up DJ type stuff, but there are basically three pe issues people always run into and. The biggest one is uh, how to use the performance controllers, how to actually record it in, in Cubase. So uh, what you have in Loop Mesh when you open it up is you've got a multi-track uh, recorder. These are all slices of audio. You click on them, you can hear them. You can load it up with your own stuff, but there's a ton of presets in here. You know, you can just open these up and go to town. Um, and You've got a sync button here at the bottom. When this is yellow, it fires. It starts when your project starts, like this. Okay. If you unsync it, then you can start and stop your own uh, to play with it. You don't have to run your project out. So at the bottom here, we've got three uh, right above the transport controls, three tabs: slice selection, audio parameters, and performance controls. This last one is kind of the gold. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and the whole idea here is that you've got, in this case, what, about half a dozen tracks of audio. And then these sliders at the left, you play with those. You know, you click this button to designate one track as your lead, kind of your primary. That's where the, the groove is going to get pulled from. And then you feather in this other stuff around the edges with the uh, similarity sliders. And uh, you've got pan and other stuff over there. You'll figure that part out. Um, so... Listen to how this changes as I change target track. Okay, so you get the idea. You'll play with that. Uh, kelp, this one's for you. If you take any of these slices here and right click, um, you can make any of these performance controller effects permanent for that slice. So if you want this particular slice to play reversed, you can do that. If you want this guy up here to be um, staccato, you get the idea. You can do backspin on that every time it shows up. Something else. Just like, um, you know when you load up Beat Designer and it has like the little keyboard at the bottom and each key has a whole different set of patterns on it? Same deal here. There's actually, in this case, 23 of the 24 deals down here have um, patterns. So it's not just the one that popped up on the first screen. Okay, and as you probably already figured out, uh, here we go. As I'm pressing these different keys on the keyboard over here, you can see the pattern selection dancing around. That's how you would use this either in recording or live. So I'm going to unsync and just I'm going to switch between patterns using the MIDI controller. Obviously, if you have, you know which keys are going to call up which patterns. You've gone in and you've made all those patterns what you want, and the in, in advance you can have all kinds of fun, either live, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or recording. So, and I've already given the answer here. That's also how you're going to actually get Loop Mesh to be recorded. So, um, when you're in slice selection mode with that tab at the bottom. Your MIDI controller is going to dance around and do this stuff. When you go to performance controllers, you can still change the loops. I'm hit, kind of playing with those same keys. This tends to be like two octaves below middle C is what you're going to change your patterns with. Then uh, the C and C sharp below middle C are the start and stop commands. We're, we're turning the whole keyboard into a a controller for this thing. And then from the middle from middle C up to an octave plus G on the top, as I hit these keys, you see those performance controllers firing off. That's how you do all your stuff. So uh, not synced. Okay. 
So that's the basic idea. And here's the last thing I want to show you, and then we'll get to that other live demo, the two camera thing. Um, is here's, here's where people go wrong. They get about this far and they go, oh, this is really cool. I want to record some of that. That was neat. And they come up here and they arm the track and they hit record and they start, they start messing around with the graphic user interface, not the MIDI keyboard. Oh yeah, it was perfect. I love it. And then you look up here, wait a minute, nothing recorded. This thing on screen doesn't uh, give off any MIDI data. You can play with that all day long. Cubase isn't going to remember that any more than it, it, you know, it doesn't record. Like when you have um, Retrolog up, the, the user interface for Retrolog, you can screw around all day long playing the little keys. That's not going to get recorded into your project. You need to do it off the MIDI keyboard. So we'll try again. We'll hit record. This time we'll... Now you see you've got MIDI notes up here, and just like it with, um, I do this so you can see it with uh, Retrolog. If you open the, open the MIDI editor, you click on the note, you'll hear the sound fire. If I click on this, you're going to see the ah, the corresponding performance controller. So you could use all of the same like quantizing tools and your pencil tool to draw in stuff and get all you know adjust your performance, your loop max performance, just like you can make all those adjustments in your, um, you know, playing a keyboard part or whatever. So um, that's the idea. Let's, uh, I'm going to wrap this part up and then see if I can get this other two camera thing to flow in and see how you like it. Have fun. See ya. Right there's the start. Just recording a little loop mash demo here. Say hi to the kids at home. Film right there. Too. Oh. Sorry. Let me turn off. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and hit stop. We're, we're like done and stuff. <laughs>